Anxious. Succulent. Luxuriant. Finger licking. Delicious. Delectable. No matter how you describe them, we're talking about truffles and how our canine friends find them. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in Ottawa, Canada. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. In this episode, we're talking canine olfaction. Yes, guess who learned a new word this week? (laughs) I was going to say, that is a big one. (laughs) We know dogs have an impressive sense of smell, but you might be surprised by the way they can use it. Our reporter Pamela Lawrence spent the day with a pack of Lagoto Roman Yolo, learning more about how they find truffles, which can be worth more than $800 an ounce, and how one of their breed found something worth much, much more on their first walk. That and more on today's show. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's take a walk, because we've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey, Pepper, want to go for a walk? Claire, today we are going back to my favorite thing about dogs is their wonderful sense of smell. I thought you were going to say their wet noses, but it's similar. It's a similar thing. It's wet noses. It's their sense of smell. Dogs see the world through their nose. Yes. And I used to have a beagle. And, you know, they say that their noses are their fifth paw because it's constantly on the ground. So some dogs are more obsessed by smells than others. There's been some amazing stories in the news quite recently about dogs with their sense of smell. Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, presented an award to a Jack Russell named Patron, which in Ukrainian means ammo. (laughs) And he had recently found 200 explosives. So he's only two and a half years old and he's been sniffing out explosives explosives and helping with the war in Ukraine. And he's doing an amazing job and being rewarded for it as well. He's been sniffing out mines over there. It's it's, it's pretty amazing. And well, just like all the stories we hear out of Ukraine, it's it's extraordinary. And uh, I'm glad to know that Patron is, is on the case. Uh, dogs can not only be used to find landmines, but they can be used for lots of things. And we'll tell you about some of the more unsavory things later in today's episode. But before we get into that, I want to um, share with you, I don't think you and I have ever chatted about the thing that I'm so proud of, which is the organ that is responsible for dogs' ability to smell. Right. No, I don't think so. So the organ which is responsible for, hang on, wait for it, canine olfaction. My my new phrase. That's right. Well, it pays to boost your vocabulary. Uh, Yes. So the organ is not the wet nose. It is called literally the Jacobson organ. And it is an organ that is inside of dogs' noses, and it is responsible for their ability to smell so well. So I take some pride in that, although I have absolutely no personal connection, but I'm sure one of my forebearers does. A long lost uncle, maybe, Probably. possibly. <laughs> we need to put our we need to put our producer on that, and we need to actually dive in. I think a whole episode on the Jacobson organ because <laughs> even though this is family friendly podcasting, I think that would get people to 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 read it <laughs> and to find out what it's all about. <laughs> I think so too. I'm fascinated, and um, that is how long have you known about the Jacobson organ? By the way, is this something that you uncovered? Time. A very oh, long really? time. When okay. I first started learning about dogs, I was like, "Well, that explains everything," and uh, <laughs> it totally makes sense. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So w- we'll do some investigative journalism on the Jacobson organ, so just to verify how how powerful it is. We've done a lot of stuff on Dog Edition about dogs' superpowers and how well they can smell. Uh, if you listen back in our old archives of episode forty two, we did a whole episode on. Your dog's nose is a superpower. But today, we're going to bring you a combination of a superpower of smelling that dogs can do and something that we all think is pretty delicious smelling. I certainly do. It is truffles. Our reporter, Pamela Lawrence, was on it. 
couple of weeks ago on a windy morning, I drove north to meet Fran Angerer, the patriarch of this family-run company. He and one of his sons, Seth, agreed to take me on a mock truffle hunt to see their dogs at work. Hi! How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm such a city girl, I can sit and look at your chickens all day. Oh yeah. On this farm, they're hoping to grow the tuber melanosporum, or black truffle. In France, this is known as the black paragord. It's prized by chefs. There are over 1,500 trees here inoculated with the spores of the black truffle. In the wild, the truffle is part of the root system. It's a symbiotic relationship between the host tree and the fungus. Seth Angerer. So when you're cultivating them, you buy inoculated trees. So the trees are raised in a laboratory in a, in a slurry of inoculum, which is the uh, spores. And once they take hold and they can prove that that tree is now inoculated, then you take the tree. You plant it and then you cross your fingers. Fran Angerer. The creation of the fruiting body is still a mystery. Nobody knows what causes a fruiting body to form. Um, this orchard here is, will be nine years old this year. No truffles. The same trees from the same source one year before, and they've been producing now for three years. It's still a mystery. Since these mysterious truffles haven't made an appearance in this orchard yet, Fran planted truffle targets before I got there so I could see how the dogs find them. I was pretty excited about meeting the dogs. My dog, Tuber, was our first Legoto. Uh, we got her in 2014 as a puppy. She was 12 weeks old. She's got a, uh, she's a purebred Legoto. Oh my gosh, hello. That's Tuber, she's the mama. Hello, mama. While truffles are a family affair for the Angerers, they're also a family affair for these Legoto Romagnolos. And the matriarch, Tuber Gianna, was born to hunt truffles. And at 16 weeks, we took her into the forest up in Oregon, and she found 30 truffles her first time, her first day. The Legoto seems to have a, a nose for truffles, and that's what they're known for, is uh, they're known as the truffle dogs. Her pups, Vito and Bella, joined us on the hunt. Luke stayed up at the house, being more of a family dog. They're all successful at finding truffles, though. I also got to meet Seth's dog, Leo, a hardworking and focused Legoto who came from a championship bloodline. Leo, he either loves you or hates you. Okay. So you'll know, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure he keeps his distance. And the other thing is when he's working, if I'm down on my hands, you know, if I'm doing this on the ground yeah. and he's kind of behind me yeah. and somebody approaches, he might be protective, so. Of course. Safety overview completed. It was time to hunt. Come on, girls, are we gonna go to work? Where's the truffle? Come on, where's the truffle? These dogs Tuber, may work the hard, but they are cute where's as can be. They have short, woolly curls, a lavish beard, pensive looking eyebrows, and whiskers. Where's the truffle? Okay, what, what, what? When Tuber finds a truffle, she gently paws the ground to show where it is. Oops, hey, sit. Good girl, good girl. I know, Tuber, it's there, huh? She says, I know it's there, Dad. Where's my treat? Fran pulls a giant bag of dog biscuits from a pocket and gives Tuber her reward for a job well done. Now it's Leo's turn. Leo, where is it? Check. Leo, check. Leo. Leo, check. When check. Seth tells Leo to check a spot, he watches carefully for Leo's subtle signal. A shift of the head, a paw tap on the ground. Any display of interest may mean Leo detects a truffle underground. You'll be walking and all of a sudden you'll notice a behavior change, basically. Their head goes from, it just gets focused. If they, their head will move and they'll start looking at a certain area. You might dig down. A, tr a truffle that's been growing there is basically part of the soil. You can't see it, you know, because it's covered in mud. Mm, so like you'll be digging around and then if you can't find it, you'll ask the dog and the dog will kind of pinpoint it. Yeah. So they'll go back in the hole and they'll show you again where show it might me. be. Show me. And it could be, I've dug down before and made a hole 10 is. inches wide can't find it, can't find it, and I'm an inch off, you know? It's like, oh no, it's over here, sorry. Oh <laughs> All right, yep, where is it? These four dogs were on leashes, right and I wondered if that's how they always hunted, or if it was because I was in their workspace. Most hunters hunt on a leash. Uh, I like hunting here. I can let these two off leash, and they, 
I've got them trained. That's how I trained Tuba, was off leash. And she's pretty good. She'll range 25, 30 yards around me. Wow. Because you want to be able to keep an eye on them so you can see when they Find them. mark. Yeah. yeah. Legoti, plural for Legoto, date back to at least Renaissance Italy. They were bred as waterfowl retrievers. Lago is Italian for lake. Yeah, well, you thirsty? But when the marshlands of Romagna in northeastern Italy were drained and turned into arable land, the Legoto evolved from being a water dog to being a truffle hunter. They are the only dog specifically bred for this purpose. <laughs> Where is it? A dog will mark the spot, and the handler will use a blade to carefully dig four to six inches underground, smell the dirt, because a ripe truffle will have a distinct odor, and then sift through the dirt to find the truffle, which may be as small as a pea or as big as a one-pound ball. And if there's a good ripe truffle there... There it is. Look, 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 look. There's a good girl. Finding such a large truffle is rare, but when you do, the reward is great. The current per pound market price in the U.S. for fresh commercial quality tuber melanosporum is between $600 and $900. It's the reason the locations of truffle farms and wild truffle hunting plots are kept so secret. At, in Spain and Italy and places that produce, they have people cut their fences and bring trained dogs in overnight and they'll harvest to harvest as much as they can. So that was partially about the mention of security was, you know, it's like you don't want to broadcast the location of a hot spot because people will, you know, unfortunately yeah. take advantage of it. Yeah. Leo spotted a jackrabbit racing across the orchard. It was enough of a distraction that we decided to call it a day for the dogs. Fran and Seth invited me up to their barn to tell me more about the fascinating history of truffle hunting and why truffle hunters prefer to use the Legoto Romagnolo dogs instead of pigs, which had been used at one time. Try loading a 300-pound pig into your pickup truck. The other thing is pigs will bite your finger off in competition of the truffle. So, yeah, dogs you can train. Dogs are... They, they're... Domestic. They love humans. They work with you. They want to please you. Whereas a pig is a pig. And pigs are great. I'm not talking down on pigs. It, it was the truffle spots in the for, wild forests in Europe were tightly kept secret. Yeah. And they would hunt for the truffles at night. The truffle hunters would. And in the family, the father wouldn't even pass down the information of where their spot was until he was ready to die. Then he would pass it on to his sons. Yeah and say, this is where we get the truffles. And they would hunt them at night because they knew people would follow them because they knew they were truffle hunters. And it was especially hard when you were walking your pig down the road because they know exactly what you're going. <laughs> a pig on a leash and an old guy, that's a truffle hunter. Now, in Northern California, you're unlikely to see a truffle hunter walking a pig down the street. Truffles are a nascent industry here. This area is more well known for its vineyards and award-winning wine production. But wine wasn't what Fran had in mind when he bought this property. The land was perfect, so he, so they say. And so we bought this place. It was all grapes. We tore all the grapes out and planted these trees. Wow, that's a bold move around here, pulling grapes <laughs> yeah. out. A very bold move, and one that may take years to yield any results. The humans may have that kind of patience, but the dogs? They are a working breed, and working breeds are a different breed. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they need... They need a job. So the Alexander Valley Truffle Company came up with a solution. We contract the dogs out to other producing, and there aren't that many. <laughs> There's a lot of potential for truffles to hit big in this foodie region once the area starts producing. Every truffle you consume in the United States, for the most part, is imported. So it's harvested, gra cleaned, grated, packaged, all that, and that all takes time. Then it's shipped and it has to go through customs, and then it's like, by the time you get it, it might already be done, you know? Like, I think the value of the local truffles will be even greater than imported truffles because they're fresh. They're the most fresh. You can get them day of. And that day, I did get some truffles, along with a bounty of fresh eggs. All right, you wanna grab a uh, bowl and we'll scramble these up? Fran recommended I put some of the eggs in a sealed container along with a truffle for some subtly flavored truffled eggs. And oh my God, let me tell you, 
I hope truffles proliferate in the region. What do you have to deal with with truffles? You got to deal with walking in the woods with dogs, eating very good meals, and drinking wine. Oh, <laughs> cheese too. There's a lot of truffles on cheese. What's wrong with that? You know. That's a good life, right there. That's a heck of a good life. Mmm. Mmm. You can definitely taste the truffle. <laughs> Mm. <sighs> I love truffles. <laughs> I so love truffles. Pam had the pleasure of being able to bring some truffles home and, and make those scrambled eggs. I have to still resort to getting truffles any way I can. And I found one of the best places to get truffles is actually where our sound designer is from, which is from Croatia. So truffles are everywhere. They're amazing. And I'm so thankful that dogs can help find them. Do you know, I consider myself quite like uh, international palate sort of thing. I've tasted most things. I've never had truffle. Oh. I've had chocolate truffles, not not, <laughs> not those okay. kind of truffles. Well, we'll wax on for a moment here. Right? Chocolate truffles are really good. When you combine dark chocolate with truffles, which I had in Croatia for the first time, they are extraordinary and <clears throat> They're not a sponsor of this show, but we will put a link in to my favorite <laughs> chocolate bar that comes from Croatia that is dark chocolate mixed with Croatian truffles that is to die for. Uh, and maybe they should be a sponsor of Dog Edition. When we come back, we are going to share with you some other things that dogs can smell out that um, <clears throat> are not as delicious as truffles. We'll be right back. And now, a message from your dog. Every day with you is like a day at the beach. And I want as many beach days as possible. I want to run and sniff and find a good stick to carry. I want to roll in the grass and warm my belly in the sun. I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want Everpuff. The green, grassy, beef liver spike smell wakes my senses. You may not realize this, but it tastes like homemade gravy, especially when you wet it. It infuses any food you give me with health and life and vibrancy. I can feel it, Everpuff, traveling to every cell in my body, nourishing each one. It helps me feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm so glad you're giving it to me every day, because every day I'm so glad to be with you. I wouldn't have it any other way. I want my Everpuff. It just makes me feel good. I am so grateful to be your dog and for the Everpuff you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup every day. Welcome back. Now, just to dwell on the truffle thing, by the way, I've been taking notes, Jim, because they said that wine growing country is excellent for growing truffles. And south coast of England is on chalk and it's supposed to be good for growing wine. So I'm thinking this could be a future career for me. You know, the truffles and the dogs look so cute. I mean, why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> I love it. I think I think that's great. We should, you should do that. When you, when you head back to Great Britain, uh, <clears throat> you know, look at it and... Truffle hunting thing. Excellent. Now, talking of the UK, uh, there's a family in England who got themselves a new puppy recently. And um, the, the dad went out. His daughter wanted a puppy. And he ended up getting a Lagota Romagnolo. Ooh. Not because... Maybe he had your idea first. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. No, I don't think he wanted the breed because he was hunting for truffles. Or maybe he did because you know how secretive it all is. Maybe he's not revealing that actually he was hunting for truffles. Um, and he just wanted it as a pet for his daughter. And they took it out on the first walk and it sniffed out, wait for it, 15 gold sovereign pieces dating back to the 19th century and worth close to eight thousand dollars these are coins yes these are coins so wow. the dog paid for itself on the first outing <laughs> i think all dogs should be responsible for for sniffing out valuable treasure that is amazing 
that's even more valuable than truffles. That that's pretty cool. Well, those uh, Legato Romagnolos are pretty extraordinary dogs. I have heard the story of another dog that is not one of those. It's a dog named Remy, and uh, Remy hails from New Jersey. It is a dog that can sniff out human fecal pollution. Oh. To keep a bay in New Jersey clean. Useful. Not quite as, um, but, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, dogs can help us in so many ways, whether it's finding treasure or truffles or human fecal matter in the yeah. Water. And this is a problem that exists in most countries in the world. Whenever there's a body of water, they worry about sewage getting into it. So I can see that this is a very valuable skill for a dog to have. Now, here's another extraordinary and quite poignant skill that sniffer dogs have been used for. Obviously, wildfires are very much in the news in lots of countries, Australia, and um, we've had some over in, in British Columbia in Calendar as well. Mm -hmm. And wildfires are particularly destructive when it comes to homes because the temperatures are so high that they literally destroy everything in their path if they, if they burn a house. There has been a particular need for dogs to come into houses where owners had been keeping the ashes of loved ones in the house. Oh. And so what happens is they haven't, you know, as they've run out of the house, they haven't grabbed the urns with their loved ones' ashes in. And... The fire sweeps through, destroys everything, usually including the container that the ashes were in. And then you are essentially searching for ashes within ashes. Wow. And obviously it's of great sentimental value. You know, if you if you perhaps were hanging on to the, the remains of a relative and you were wanting to carry out their last wish to take them to a certain location and you hadn't been able to do it. So these dogs come in. And they're able to find these ashes and signal where they are. And then the owner is reunited with them and able to, to keep them. It is an extraordinary story. And we're actually going to give you a little bit more coverage in a future episode of Dog Edition. Because it is extraordinary dogs that can smell ashes within ashes. They're just so useful in so many ways. All because of the Jacobs in Oregon. And now you know. Say the word. Go ahead. Say the word. What, what, what is the word, vocabulary word for today? Canine olfaction. Yes, that Canine is the... Canine olfaction. Yes. And we have a human olfaction. It's something to do with just smelling, the ability to smell and what we do with it. It's it, we, it, This is such an educational show, isn't it? It is. And again, if you want more information on the power of the nose, listen to episode 42 of Dog Edition. But that is all we have time for today. I do want to thank you for bringing us along on your journey. We'll be back with another episode of Dog Edition soon, but chances are you and your dog will be taking a walk between now and then. So we have some other things for you to listen to. Yes, the Dog Podcast Network has many shows, including our sister show, The Long Leash, if you want to listen to more in-depth interviews. And if you've enjoyed listening to Dog Edition, there are two things that you can do which would really help us. You can head to your podcast app and follow along, and then you will get alerted whenever we have a new episode. Or if you're out in the park, you're walking a dog, you're having a chat with a friend who's also a dog lover, tell them about Dog Edition and help this program grow. Just tell them about our website site dogedition.com where they can listen to all the back episodes including episode 42 or you know get the link to their favorite podcast player be sure to join us next time when we will tell you the story about dion leonard who is an ultra marathoner and the desert dog who refused to be left behind yeah their story is quite extraordinary and really touching as well that's next time on dog edition i'm claire mansell in ottawa canada and i'm james jacobson in maui hawaii from all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, we wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Dion Leonard, who is an ultra marathon runner, something that you do, Claire. I don't quite do ultra marathons, but thanks, for, thanks for thinking oh. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Half we, marathons, maybe. Okay. Half marathons.